Hello friends, Mali Pompadu here, CEO of the SOAR Community Network and co-founder of the SOAR Community Nebula. Our goal this year is to bring to you 1,000 community champions and community builders. And today I'm delighted to bring to you my friend, Joan Fletcher. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Mali. I'm really looking forward to talking with you today. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Well, we are really focused this year on defining what real leadership means in terms of being a change agent, not only in our businesses, for the businesses that we serve, but also for the community that we serve. And that's really the goal this year is to elevate all of us in the community um, to expand beyond our business leadership roles and more of a community change agent. So I'd like for you to begin by sharing with us uh, the work that you're currently doing in the world as a community change agent. Okay, so I guess professionally, I do a lot to work with people. I work mostly with senior leaders, whether individually or in their teams, and I work on leadership. So your topic is very compelling for me. And um, personally, there's a lot of different things I do. I, you know, that I, I do, I try to do some years, I do more than others in working with individuals and community groups to bring positive change. That's fantastic. We're going to dive in a little bit more about what that actually means. Um, one of the first questions that I like to ask on these interview series is really having you share an experience or moments or perhaps even highlight a person or two in your life that has shown you what it means to be a true leader, has mentored you, has shifted your way of thinking or your way of being. Uh, can you share some insights around that? You know, that question is a, that's a question for me that has so many different answers. I've been one of those people that have had, I mean, literally hundreds of people in sometimes small ways and sometimes large ways really make a difference in my life. Everything from people that responded to something, you know, something that I needed or responded to something that I didn't even know I needed mm -hmm. that showed me either compassion or empathy. Also people that live a certain, to a certain standard that have changed me because I've changed my standards, seeing what the bar that they set for themselves. And, um, you know, many times I was, I was really thinking about people, um, the other day I was thinking about people that have really made a difference in my life. And, it was funny. I mean, there were some, there were some people that have been really, you know, phenomenal CEOs that I've worked with over the years, over the 30 plus years. And I've learned so much from them as they've managed themselves, their life, their personal life, and then all of the people that they work with in their organization. But what I kept coming back to were so many of my um, girlfriends mm -hmm. and how they just happened to show up at the right place at the right time. They say the right thing. They help me. You know, um, I had battled a pretty serious illness years ago and they just were always there. Even when I said, oh, no, 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 I don't need anything. And they just showed up and were there. And I mean, I, I started thinking about it and I came up with such a long list. Everything from, you know, a dear friend, a walking partner that at the time wasn't you know, it was a friend. I never thought it was a dear friend, but I had had surgery and I was supposed to, you know, like barely walk and I was a pretty physical person. And so four or five times a week, she just showed up and she would, you know, just barely walk with me until I was fully recovered. And I mean, I, I look back on that and the amount of time that she turned her life inside out with a full-time job and kids to just you know, get me out of the house and to get myself back into physical shape. So, I mean, all of, I could go on and on, and I know we don't have time for that. But no, it's, yeah. it's beautiful what you share, and I think this is a theme where every time I ask that question in this interview series, it's so hard, right? Because all of the little moments in our lives make up the big events or the big um, stories, the, the, the arc of what it means to be a be a change agent, be a community builder. Uh, it's not one person. It's a series of events with multiple people over a period of time that shape us into who we are. So I value that. But what I really value is, you know, a lot of times when we, 
think about the people in our lives, we, we forget about the little, small, yet so profound acts of kindness uh, in those in our lives that we normally take, uh, take, take for granted, I should not take advantage, but take for granted, right? Our brothers, our sisters, our girlfriends, our neighbors, um, we all get elevated by community. And yeah. that's really special. Oh, that's right. Right. When you think of change agents and champions for change in your community, what are some of the attributes or characteristics that are pretty consistent? Yeah, so one of the things that I, I always see and I start to recognize in someone that they're going to be some type of a change agent, for if not for me, if for the community or for another person, is that they're always willing to give a hand. They're always willing to sacrifice a little bit of something for themselves, whether it's time, whether it's money. Um, and, it, and it really stands out as I've gotten to know, you know, a lot of people over my life. There's, there's many people out there that are really put out off or put out to give something back. And what I keep seeing over and over in people that are really making a difference, they're, you know, they're working an extra volunteer hour during the week. They're, you know, finding a way to give a little percentage of some of their income every month to an organization. And mm -hmm. I see it over and over again. We can each make a difference. We just have to, you know, we have to do something, even if it's a small thing. Right. Now that you're talking about doing something, what are some of the causes or movements or initiatives that you're really rallying behind right now, using your gifts, your talents, your life experiences to help advance forward? Can you share some of those uh, movements with us? Yes. So two, two different things that I, I hope I can explain well. Um, one, I started um, 21 years ago, and it was with a family that I had heard was living in poverty, and they were concerned they were going to lose their children. It was a, it was a single mom. She was afraid she was going to lose her children because um, she couldn't work and provide child care and provide food. So um, I organized a group of people and um, actually 50 people, and we really gave her a lot of help and got her back on her feet. But then I learned a lesson that has stuck with me for a long time. I learned that you can help someone like that, but they need more than just that week of, you know, furniture, clothing, food. Um, they need much more than that. So this has been a family that um, is still very close to me. They've become friends. They're part of what I do and who I spend time with. In fact, her oldest daughter at um, 28 just had her very first baby. And, you know, it's the time to talk with her and go out and visit the baby in the hospital and just to watch this family. I mean, this mother now owns her own home and to watch this family and see what has happened. And they're not out of the woods. I mean, it's, you, you I mean, if you're in poverty in, a, in the DC metro area, it, takes a lot more than, you know, one other family helping you, but they are making it. And I, I'm just continually amazed at this mother who continues to go above and beyond to not just raise her children so they become vibrant citizens, but to stick with them. So that's been something that um, I just love to share with people that, you know, if you can, there's, there's plenty of people in our area right here that could really use someone to just hang in there, even if it's just one child that you meet monthly, you know, take to McDonald's for an ice cream cone and listen how their school day's going. It, if you can stick with someone long enough, you build such a relationship that you can really help. And then real quick, my second one is the Human Rights Campaign. It's a national organization that's located in DC and they believe in equality for all people regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of gender. And this organization is unbelievable. It's, it's almost, um, well, it's a couple thousand employees, but the number of volunteers are incredible. And they hold a fundraising event every Saturday night of the entire year. And they organize, they help with laws, they help bring awareness. And it's just full of these people that want to make such a change 
in where we would treat every human being with the same respect that we each want. So it's definitely an organization that I give a little money to, that I support a lot with my leadership services, um, you know, at a reduced rate. And I'm hoping to have a real ripple effect. Can you tell us how we can learn more information? What's the website for them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the website is hrc.com. And um, they're located right across from the National Geographic in DC. And, you know, really great people, nice people. And they, they you know, I, I know it was interesting before I even really knew about them, I kept hearing a little bit here and there. And I, it, now it comes up often. People say, oh yeah, I, I send them $5 every month. I'm on a recurring payment with them, you know, or I send them $50 a month. It's really interesting. So it makes me feel like a lot of us are really believing that everyone is equal. And that's a, that's a big thing I'm behind in my life and my work. That's powerful. I also love the fact that you um, shared with us that there are folks that contribute $5 a month, $50 a month, $500 a month. Every little bit counts um, because when you're trying to support a movement, and there are many movements, you can't support them all, but little by little, we can do our part. Right. We can make a big difference. $5 can make a big difference to any, any, you know, any nonprofit out there. Absolutely. When you think about those difficult times in your life where you've been challenged, where you mentioned surgery, you've mentioned other things in your life, uh, what helps you to come back to center? What helps you when you're going through difficult times? Is there a philosophy that you follow, a model that you, a mantra or a quote that you would like to share with us to also help us move forward in difficult times? Okay, so there's, there's actually three that I use all the time, not just in my head, but I use them with my children, with my friends, with my clients. Um, one is one I heard years ago, and it just says that today is not a dress rehearsal. So I just really believe that this is it, this moment right here, you know, with us. Um, another thing that's been really powerful to me, and it's the hardest one for me, and that is that the best thing you can do for those people that love you is to love yourself. And so that's been profound in my life that has forced me to, you know, get in physical shape, stay in mental shape, stay in emotional shape. Those things I'm doing, not just for myself, but those that I love. And then there's a quote I heard years ago, and I have always tried to find out who said it, but um, I heard it at a conference years ago and it said that if if we work on improving ourselves an eighth of a percentage point every day we will be more successful than any person we've ever known and so i really try before i you know crash at night fall asleep i really try to make sure that there's something some little thing that I've either improved or learned or done to better the world. And then I figure I'm on my success journey. So those are my three. Those are really powerful, really, really powerful. Um, it's so interesting because I love these quotes and these philosophies. And then every time I hear them, I think, gosh, the words are so simple. Every time I feel that, oh, we could do that actively doing them practicing them wow it is such uh, a challenge for us human beings you know how do we how do we love ourselves what what are the action steps that show us ourselves that show us that we are moving in that direction of loving ourselves you mentioned exercise you mentioned just making sure that health wise body wise you know mentally that you are taking care of yourself but how do we do that on a daily basis and commit to it it's just I know, every time I, I, I get this question, I get the answer. I'm like, well, that's simple enough. Why aren't we doing it? <laughs> it's such a journey, isn't it? Step it by really step. Is. Yeah, it I know. Really is. Joan, when you imagine a better world, what does that look like through your eyes? Mm, what a question. You know, I think one of the 
biggest things that I believe in, and I, I know I've represented this my whole life, is that there's a lot of gray in the world. And because most things are not either or, and most things are not black or white, I believe that one reason I'm able to get along with almost anyone, regardless of what they believe, is because I don't believe that I have all the right answers. And I believe there's a lot of different right answers for each situation. So with that, I believe in that gray, that gray area. And I think a better world would be a world where more and more people were able to not say either or, or that, not this. If people were able to say both and, or maybe part of this is right and part of this whole other angle or side is right. So that's what I really wish for people to just have a bit more of an open mind and not be so cemented in there's only one answer because there's more than one answer. Wow. I love that answer. Think of also all the shades of gray in the world, right? Yes. Think of the dark grays, the light grays, somewhere, and this is such a, it's a Buddhist philosophy um, that, that says somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And it really is this idea that we can be, we can believe in two, on, we can be on two different spectrums of whatever idea, whatever philosophy, or whatever even political stance. And yet all the stuff in the middle cannot be ignored. All the stuff in the middle is what makes up really, I think where the answers are is kind of bridging that and coming back to center and saying, okay, what can I, what can I own to be true that's somewhere on the spectrum that you also believe in and can we start from there? Exactly. A give, a give and a take both ways, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just me giving 100%. It's not just you giving 100%. It's the two of us coming to that, whatever the middle is. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Well said. Yeah. Joan, I have one final question to ask of you. If our community, um, with SOAR Community Network, if our community could support you, your causes, the movements that move you, what are one or two things that you would like for us to support you with? Mm, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think anything that SOAR does to really expand that thinking of that gray area, you know, to bring more enlightened thinking, that is going to have such an enormous ripple effect. Um, I don't know if we have enough organizations really pushing for that. And I think that that is probably one of the biggest things we have to do. You know, just as a nation, we're watching our nation get more and more divided, but yet we, we, are, we represent, you know, one country and coming together and caring for one another. So if there's, you know, and I know, I know you're doing a lot of things like this. You know, you're interviewing many people, you're getting such positive thinking and um, just, helping people see things that they might not have seen on their own. So I think that's one of the best ways, not just to support me and the world I live in, but to support everyone in the world they're living in. I mean, I think what you're doing is great. And I, I think it's great you're interviewing a thousand people and getting their thoughts. Because once again, everyone will have different mantras and different beliefs and different things they support. And I'm sure there's not one best interview. It's going to be who's watching it and what speaks to a certain person. Absolutely. But I also feel that there's so much more that we can do. Um, and I think, I think we can't, as individuals, do it all by ourselves. So if it means interviewing a few hundred or if we reach our goal of a thousand this year, um, think of the ripple effect of just sharing that knowledge, sharing new thought and ideas, because I don't have all those ideas in my head. 
and even our small team under the SEN brand, we don't have the, the manpower to change the entire world just with us physically, right? But if we did it together and we highlighted all the community builders and light bearers and change agents and whatever name you want to put to it, spiritual teachers, right, civic activists, all of these brave, powerful, empowering souls, then elevation of thought, of consciousness, of love, of positivity will be a part of the, the movement. And uh, I just feel like there's no way in, in this world that we can do it by ourselves. And if we ever thought we could, um, we know that capacity-wise, we don't have enough time and resources. So we've got to amp this up. And that's what the goal is here. So I appreciate you for being a part of this mission of ours. Well, thank you. It's, it's, going, it's been fun to watch your growth and your expansion. So I know I'll continue to see growth and expansion. So much success on this journey. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for shifting and reshaping our leaders, young, older, all of the leaders in your life that you've touched. We really appreciate you. For those that are watching, please remember to nominate yourself and someone in your community who's making a difference. We'd love to feature them and highlight all of the causes and movements that they support so we can learn about them as well. Please visit us at nebula.soarcommunitynetwork.com. Thank you so much.